Yeah, we remember that. For SFF, 2020 was chaos. It meant disrupted travel, disrupted budgets, disrupted programming, disrupted relationships. We couldn't spend time in the field with the people that we love and seek to serve. But for our partners, 2020 was just the latest in a series of obstacles to overcome, to serve their communities, to be more healthy and resilient, to give voice to those without. On today's call, I want to look back at 2020 to see how we did. Gladys, can you give us an overview of our programs? Thank you, Andy. We actually had a strong 2020. Our grant making was uninterrupted. In fact, we started offering advances to our partners so that the lack of cash flow would not affect the continuity of their programs. We supported 273 partners and even with interruptions, we managed to bring on board 68 new partners. This ability to keep bringing on new partners is due primarily to our strong pipeline, our large referral network, and our social impact incubators. Since our niche is supporting early stage organizations, helping them to grow, we made sure to keep finding local organizations with small budgets. It's been awesome that our funding is unrestricted so that our partners can be flexible. Like Mukisa Foundation, who are able to purchase food for 500 children at risk of malnutrition during the lockdown. Patua Network, who use their grant to support families with a cash transfer program to offset job losses and business closures. Our partners really went above and beyond in 2020. Having a local team makes it easy for us to keep in touch with partners. I think Beatrice calculated 3,000 hours worth of Zoom huddles with the African Visionary Fellows. How amazing is that? It is super great to have such a strong community. Being in touch made it easy for us to stay on top of what was happening in all the different countries where we work. Absolutely. That made it obvious that we needed to take our budget that wasn't being spent on travel and events and quickly deploy it on COVID grants. We were able to spread an additional $1 million out to 71 organizations, like when FAME moved quickly to source oxygen concentrators, beds, and N95 masks for their treatment center. We were able to give them a small grant and connected them to the Gold Family Foundation, who supported partners with PPE. Yeah, when you come to think of it, 2020 was really business as usual for us because it was business as usual for our partners. Just as always, we saw local leaders on the ground adapting, collaborating and working together. I really loved how education partners like Razor Pope, Jack Rand Foundation, Ladish Learning, among others, piloted a joint remote education program to support over 3,000 learners across 30 primary schools in Malawi. Or how Sakodain Service Yes Mniza patterned in Burundi to over COVID prevention roadshows twice a week at marketplaces and mobile clinics. They reached over 25,000 people. And that message of prioritizing proximate leadership really seemed to resonate with our founder friends. We were able to leverage $9.5 million from other donors toward our partners. We partnered with Give Directly and Helton Foundation to facilitate $400,000 in cash transfers to over 2,500 households through our Malawi partners. Clearly, the philanthropic sector is looking for more examples of accessible grant making. Speaking of stories resonating, it was obvious through our future summit that people really wanted to talk about race, power, and privilege. It was a breath of fresh air. People are ready for open and genuine conversation around this in the midst of everyday philanthropy. We need to be louder about this more than ever. That's true. We need to lean in to having the tough conversations for our own learning and to lead by example. In a virtual world, we can reach so many more people. Yes, even though the Future Summit was a different platform, it had all the same features of our annual meeting. We were able to provide people with an opportunity to network, to learn, and to celebrate. I love that we were able to find time for fun as well. It was really special that we were able to open it up and make it available to everyone. 
with over 1,000 people local to the Future Summit 2020, it was like we grew our community of SFO boosters to full bloom. <laughs> Our community is always growing, and despite the setbacks and challenges, life must go on. Twenty twenty was quite a year. The world came to a standstill, but we never did. We got stronger, and we never ever stopped fighting for fairness. Thanks everyone, see you next week.